Okay. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. First of all, fantastic. Okay. All right. So, um, so out of us that are on here, um, who has actually read the entire book of 10X, the rule by Grant Cardone? I'm on chapter 17. Okay. I just finished yesterday listening to the book. I haven't, I have the hard copy, but I haven't actually physically read it. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Adam? I, but I got the download from somebody and I got about four and a half hours into it. And then for whatever reason, the file got corrupted. So I can't listen to it anymore. And ever since then, my life has been a downward spiral. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I like optimize, it's like my routine. Like when I, when I shower and shave, like I put the book on, you know, and that's kind of like my background noise in, in the shower and stuff. And every morning I'm faithful that this is going to work this time. It hasn't worked for like two weeks. So I, it's like, and I don't want to like delete it to try and add it because I, it's. Do you like, have it in, like you somebody just, just sent you an audio file of it? Yeah, we'll, it was. We'll get that fixed. Don't worry. We're going to fix it. I got to try and figure something out there. It's so. fine. We'll get you figured out. Okay. How about you, Jody? So I've been, um, I have not, I have the book, but I have not read it yet. I have been doing those little like snippets of, you know, here's what the book's about and here's what we're going to focus on and everything else. Kind of like Cliff Notes. So I've been watching YouTubes. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it's been really good. I'm yeah. excited. So the way that I came upon Grant Cardone, I was selling cars and, you know, I was, my first six months, I mean, I was really struggling. It was like worse than struggling in real estate um, <laughs> because you're, you're in a dealership within these four walls and you've got like these car guys like who are 22 who have been in this business since they were 15 and yelling at you <laughs> and you're 40 you know <laughs> and it sucked it sucked so bad <laughs> um and i was so poor and i like you know was yeah it was it was it was tough um but that's honestly when i started listening and getting into like all the law of attraction stuff and um, the science of getting rich and um, the power of consistency that I keep telling you guys to read um, by Weldon Long. And, um, and, uh, and then um, came upon Grant Cardone. And I think, I don't know if 10X Rule is the first one I listened to. It, I, I don't know. The first one I might have listened to is a closer, the, the closer survival guide by Grant Cardone. And that, you know, was fantastic for me selling cars, you know, cause, um, yeah, cause I don't, I, it just helped me learn really to close and, and give me that power. So anyway, that's how I come, came upon Grant Cardone. So, um, well, what, what we get, what we've got here is we've got, um, book notes that Julie is so gracious to put together for us. She spends a lot of time on it. So we're just going to go through it and kind of talk about each um, topic and mastermind about it. And we don't have too many slides here and we'll, we'll try to end well before 10. Okay. So we're going to just power through it. All right. So that, what is the 10 X rule? So Grant Cardone said it's the one thing that will guarantee you get what you want in amounts greater than you ever thought imaginable, imaginable. So what I appreciate about Julie doing these notes is I don't have the hard copy. I really need to get it. Um, I, I listen to it, but when I read the words, it's just, it's a, just another layer of power, you know? So, so anyway, so it's, so it's the one thing that's going to guarantee you to get what you want in, in amounts greater than you ever thought imagine, imaginable. Um, so here's kind of the premise is you put forth 10 times the effort that other people put forth. So <laughs> how do y'all feel about that? This is, I was, I was hoping for this opportunity. This is one of the, like, I'm, I'm obsessed with business. I, I love business processes and it's just, it's really cool. Um, one of the most amazing and frustrating things about business and about uh, continues, it is literally that easy. 
the mm. hard part is because you just do more. You just do more. Like whatever you whatever effort you're doing isn't going to work. So you just do more. Okay. Whatever, you know, whatever exponential effort you want to put on a five X, you know, it doesn't matter. Just do more than what you're doing now and you'll get better results. But it's, I, I tell my son that and he's like, well, if it's so easy, why doesn't everybody do it? And it's like, because of discipline and lack of consistency, that's right. what really sets it apart. And it's like taking something you look, Oh, I just do 10 times. Okay. So, you know, instead of making 10 cold calls today, I'm going to do a hundred cold calls today. Okay. Well then do that every single day. That's the difference. It's doing one day. Okay, well, cool. I got three leads. No, you do that every single day. It's it's that consistency, which is going to be that temporary boost in business versus that's long-term sustainability. And that's the tough part for me. Right. Don't you think, Adam, and I, I think you and I need to get to know each other. I, I like that stuff. Um, <laughs> but I think more importantly, it's not that it's that easy. It, it's, it's that simple, but the act of doing 10 times of what you think is necessary to achieve your goal that's not easy that's why that's why more people don't and, and i agree yeah consistency as well that that not as well probably consistent consistency primarily but that is part of doing 10 times more than what you're doing now i i i hear a lot of people always say if it was that easy why don't more people do it right. nobody said it was easy i don't think you know it's it's about effort. So, so simple, simple not easy. What, Julie? They start off doing it. I call real estate agents, you know, phone call, but then they fizzle out, right? Right. They don't stick with it. Yeah, and it's like you have to, one of the hardest things is, is like in the back of our mind, you know, everybody has our why, okay? So one of the hardest things is back in mind, like, like we have that in mind at all times, but when we get off track, it's difficult to put that in the forefront of our mind and push through whatever we're dealing with rather than like, yeah, I'm doing this because I don't want to have to worry about financial status or, or, you know, all that, whatever your why is, but it's, it's difficult to just keep that way. It's like, Oh man, you know, like, like I think I have enough, no, you can never have enough leads. Right. You can never have enough business. You can never have like, if you're, if you're bursting at the seams in business, that is a good problem to have. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting for sure. It is. So then the next slide is what is 10x thinking? It's the approach to life with the right mindset. Set targets that are 10 times what you dream of. And I love this because <clears throat> so when I started, you know, really starting to try to think this way, and when I was selling cars, you know, I always have this goal, like, okay, I'm gonna sell 20 cars this month. And my sales manager is like, well, you haven't even sold, you know, 15 yet in one month. So what makes you think you can sell 20? And I'm just like, well, I'm just, I have to, I swear I have to put my goal there. Cause you know, I just, I have to, <laughs> you know, I didn't want to like set it lower. I wanted to set it higher and it was okay with me if I didn't achieve the 20. I mean, I wouldn't say it was okay with me, but, but at least I was trying, you know? So, okay. So, um, he talks about extraordinary levels. Are you succeeding at extraordinary levels? Are you putting forth the effort at your true potential to get you to the next level? Hmm. <laughs> um, that, that was a hard one for me to for me to answer. I kind of glanced through it, and a lot of times, like I'm I'm very self aware, and it's just like, man, I'm answering no to like so like I need to get my shit together. <laughs> you know? <Right. laughs> yeah, totally. Like, well, well, what's hard about this for me right now is I am putting forth all the possible effort I can, but I'm not necessarily, I don't know that I'm putting it forth out to all the right things I, that are to get me to my goals, but at least I know I have it in me. <laughs> going to make a great story someday. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, I know you want to say something. I hear, I see your face. Yeah, well, I just think we get so distracted. It's so easy to be distracted and now we've lost sight of the, the most important goal. We're taking care of just the little things. Yes. Well, I think success sometimes is the distraction, you know? Right. I don't, I don't need to do what I was doing before because I have, I'm achieving what I set out to do or whatever. And then oftentimes you, you make that decision way too early and, and you have a piece of success, but you don't necessarily have your, 
your big picture. You got to keep your foot on the pedal. Right. Um, I, some of the last couple of chapters are still fresh in my mind, so I'll, I'll yeah. watch until we get there. But oh, that's okay. No, nah, but just that massive. He keeps using the word massive, massive action. action. And that's I don't know. That for some reason, out of I don't. I'll back up and tell you that I don't typically do well with the. Um, I don't know what the word is, but the the sales gurus, you know, um, I like Bob Proctor, um, but the modern day, like even Tom Ferry, mm. who has some great content and stuff, but it's more about, I, I'm sorry, hopefully I don't get struck by lightning or something. I don't know who you guys is. <laughs> the real estate gods. But, God. <laughs> but you know, the, 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 the flashy, arrogant part that gets people's attention. I just, the sales gurus have always turned me off and, and Grant Cardone has come up a million times, obviously, uh, with his content and stuff in front of me because I, I follow other people similar right. to him or whatever. And um, I've never given him a chance because he came off as that yeah. arrogant guy. So this book, it really is my first piece of content that I've given a chance. And as soon as I started the audio, I honestly thought to myself, damn it, this is why, this is why I don't typically get into this. And I gave it enough time where I'm like, shit. And that ma the word massive action, just the words massive action. I don't know, for some reason, just strike a, strike a bell. And I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if you got far enough into the, oh, you said you finished listening to it. So and I, don't know, I don't know if Adam got far into it, but I just appreciate <clears throat> Grant Cardone because I don't know if what he says in the print version of the book, Julie, but I love what he says. Like there's one chapter he wants to call Don't Be a Little Bitch. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I like that. Yep. Yeah, I, it's before chapter 17 because I did read that. Okay, you know, he's like, I want, you know, my editors wouldn't let me name this chapter that, but that's what I wanted to call it. <laughs> exactly, that's <laughs> right. You know, and I just appreciate it. I guess, you know, I, to me, he's just, I think he's not really a, like a sales guru type I you know even though he's just like get it done no excuses just plow through it no bs type guy and I I I like that you guys yeah. it just got so dark here just now because I think it's gonna storm okay yeah. I gotta... so when right. so when um before I got into real estate I uh, my um um my ex-husband who's passed away now uh we had a boat dealership and um when we first started um, the boat dealership, he would uh, have a, have a, a um, Manila like this, one of these, you know, uh -huh. things, you know um, things, and uh, he would write his leads on it, and, and, and it would say their name, and it would say what kind of boat they were looking for, and their phone number, and then over the years, it would slowly have like sold um, next to it, and he would, you know, just keep track. He, he would have pages and pages of his, called it his lead book. And, um, and every night he, you know, he, we would come home and, and, and he would make those calls. He would try and drum up the business every night. Well, I mean, we had, you know, we were married 10 years and, and our dealership, be, you know, became the number one mastercraft dealership in the, um, country. Um, mm, and, wow. um, yeah. And, and it was all because he was so consistent on calling those names every night. And then it became, he didn't have time to call those names because the phone was ringing during the day. So there eventually, you know, it, the word got out that, you know, all these boats were everywhere. People started coming and calling. And, and so he didn't have to work as hard uh, every night, mm -hmm. um, making those persistent calls. But I was, um, I've been working on, um, I, I did that um, lead squeeze page on next door that uh, you, ta you taught and I've had over 50 people um, come into my KV core. And so at night I sit here and I do the property flyer and I, I keep track of everything in different areas of my computer. And I just was thinking to myself, this feels like the beginning days of when we had the boat dealership of, mm -hmm. of just at, you know, being consistent and handwriting those envelopes and you know it I just kind of felt that feeling that's there. cool yeah. I like that thank you for sharing that um so um 
Grant says, when people start limiting the amount of success they desire, I assure you they will limit what will be required of them in order to achieve success and will fail miserably at doing what it takes to keep it. That's, you know, that's, I'm just going to let that sit there because <laughs> it's going to get more into it here in Julie's notes. So this is what the 10x rule is. Setting targets 10 times what you think you want and then doing 10 times what you think it's going to take to accomplish those targets. So what Adam was saying earlier, okay, I want to, you know, set a listing appointment today. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want to set, two, you know, two or three or four listing appointments today. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going to need to make, you know, a hundred calls to do it, but I, I probably need to make 200, yep. <laughs> you know, that it's like that kind of level, but oh gosh. It makes and then, me yeah, and then you think, what are you, what am I doing to myself? What did I get myself into? <laughs> Exactly. I know it's a numbers game, but these are some pretty big, there's a lot of zeros on this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, so here's basic mistakes when you're setting out to achieve goals. You guys, everybody clap for Julie for making these notes for us. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, Julie. Um, so basic mistakes when setting out to achieve goals. Mistargeting, so not targeting, not setting the right target severely underestimating what you got to do to achieve those goals, spending too much time competing, which that really resonates with me. Mm -hmm. Spending too much time competing with others and then underestimating the amount of adversity you're going to need to overcome to be able to achieve the goal. So those are the four big mistakes. So I want to, um, I want we, to uh, jump in here. So I went to, yeah. um, I help an investor, local investor, uh, kind of bird dog for properties. And um, I love going to those meetings They're every month and they're just amazing. There's a bunch of EXP. His wife is an EXP agent and uh, that's kind of how I got introduced to him. So with the spending too much time competing, there was uh, a panel of three investors. One like doesn't really, he basically just flips houses, fix and flips, doesn't, doesn't do rentals, doesn't anything else. The other one, did a lot of the stuff hands-on. He's got a construction background. The third one did property management and kind of dabbles in rentals. Mm. But everybody had different things. And they were talking about um, competition. And the one guy that had, um, that was just flips, he, he does about 200 flips a year. He gets scared when he doesn't have 25 flips going on at one time. So he, he's high volume consistent, okay? <laughs> um, and he said that nobody in this room there was maybe 60 people in the room during this meeting he said nobody in here is my competition he says that's not me being arrogant or me saying you're not in the same league as me he's mm -hmm. like nobody in this room has the exact same goals mindset method and ability to accomplish those goals he's like competition is not really what people make it out to be mm -hmm. he's like so just you know so i was I, like that really hit me i was just like Holy, because he's like, everybody's why you might be similar, but it's not exactly the same. So he's like, you're not really competing with anybody else in a room. He's like, it, it's not direct. It's not even indirect. It's just yeah. not competition. And then that kind of like, I've been really letting that kind of sit you're in my brain for the few days. I'm like, wow, like that's. It's, it, it's mind blowing like, a little bit. It's it is like just these little snippets sometime. And then you get like somebody's perspective and it's like, that is like, that is absolutely right. And I can tell Jeff wants to say something. <laughs> oh, it's crazy how well you've gotten to know me. I know. Yeah. I no, Adam. That's I. Um, that's a huge part of why this book is sparking. And it's crazy timing for me as well. Like mm -hmm. it's oh, spurns spawn. Um, some <laughs> some thoughts and some things in my business, but that that actually this topic is probably what made me say, okay, this Grant guy must know what the hell he's talking about because. Right. Because that competition thing, like I, my market is a pretty small rural market. You know, my the main zip code has 15,000 people in it, mm -hmm. or 30,000, sorry. Um, and a lot of the people that, I'm, I'm, that are real estate agents in my market are people I've known for most of my life, uh, or at least half of it. Mm -hmm. um, literally, this brick wall you see behind me, the number one agent in my market is literally on the other side of this brick wall, um, probably right now. Um, 
in a company that I used to work for for six years, I literally my office wasn't right there. It was in that direction on this wall. Um, so it's you know it's easy to compare yourself to everybody um, in this kind of market and in this dynamic. And man, do I get myself sometimes um, caught up in that. And and I'm I'm at the top of my market. I'm I'm two, three, four consistently um, here. It's a small market, so I guess I'm not bragging too much, but. <laughs> um, yeah. but. Well, no, and I gotta say, uh, Adam, cause it, and Jody, as she just, went, but uh, um, Jeff is an icon agent, just so you know. Okay, go Ooh, ahead, Jeff. Um, and no, it's easy to get caught into that. What's he doing? And there's a couple of new, young, up and coming agents that are mm -hmm. killing it, you know, and and it's as an older recruit him, recruit him. Well, <laughs> as an older um you know somewhat i'm 15 years in the business not like i'm I have 30 years under my belt but watching somebody come up do really well you sometimes you can feel threatened if you're not in the main in the right mindset um so like a year ago actually when i came on to exp part of my uh shtick with what I was doing, I bought a building, I moved, I opened a branch office with EXP and it wasn't to kill it. It wasn't to knock it dead. It was to settle in mm. like, and get, get out of comparing myself to other people, set my goals, do my thing the way I wanted and get away from all that. So I didn't get caught in that right. comparison stuff. Um, and so I did that for a while and then, you know, watch some things around me, I start comparing, start seeing other people have levels of success they hadn't had before and feeling like all of that newness kind of wore off mm. for me. You know what I mean? Um, anyway, the timing of this, that chapter in particular woke me up and I don't know, are you guys catching me? It looks like you're yeah. frozen to me. You're frozen, but I can yeah, hear audio's you. Yeah, good. audio is good. Oh. I'm going to keep talking until you <laughs> stop me. Um, anyway. Okay. No, I, I think I mean, that I, was I, the trap of complacency. Um, oh, gotcha. It was yeah. getting comfortable. And, and then you start seeing what goes on around you when you're comfortable because you're not paying attention to your own goals. But gotcha. um, so I'm taking massive action now. Anyway, um, good timing. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Or yeah, we can hear yeah, you. Yeah, can, compla can complacency is very crippling. Wait, I want to I want to chat with him. Oops. Oh, he's back. I can see him. He's oh. moving now. Okay, we could hear you, Jeff. We heard everything you said. You were just frozen. So, <laughs> um. So anyway, um. Yeah, and 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 but also at the same time, the settling in also served you. You did achieve icon. Um. Two. Yeah. No. And the funny thing is, is I didn't fully understand the icon set up so it was never it wasn't a goal of mine necessarily right. it wasn't until a couple people mentioned uh, so you're gonna get all your sixteen thousand dollars back <laughs> yeah, well yeah whoa I, okay cool I, yeah. <laughs> yeah but good job but so now some 10x type thinking has me saying well shit if i yeah. if i did that yeah. you know i mean yeah if i could do that what else can i do yeah, and, and quietly kind of been positioning myself to, I didn't realize it, but to actually be in place to execute some bigger things. I brought on a buyer specialist, I've grown a little bit of a team. And, oh, great. Um, but I, I've been doing, I've had some sales calls this week with some data providers. I'm looking at some seller prospecting ideas that I have kind of been kicking around for a few years, but haven't taken action on them. Um, but I had, but in or, one of these programs, um, in order to see it through and, and make it worth it, I would have to be selling about 200 units. Um, mm. And I, and 60 was basically it for me this past year, 62. Uh, so like, you know, gosh, dang, do I want to sell 200 units? Well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, my first two or three days was, no, I, I once had a goal of 100 and I got to 77 one year and said, Oh no, not a, I won't do that. Again. <laughs> that was tiring. Um, 
but my but my team structure wasn't set up to support it. Mm-hmm. I'm in a position right now where if I wanted to make a run at 200, I, a, you know, there's quite a bit of risk. There's a financial investment, and, and then getting some other people to depend on me for their income. <laughs> um, so I'm kicking it around, I guess is my point. And I say do it. Ten exit. Um, do it, Jeff. Still, still doing some research, perhaps. What's that? Two hundred by twenty twenty. There you go. Here's your slogan. Two hundred by twenty twenty. Or I, maybe two hundred in twenty twenty. There you go. There you go. Buy a little extra time. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, no pressure. No pressure. Just a little, just so, a little bit anyway, of it, If I can find something maybe a little more financially reasonable than what's been thrown at me, I probably will. The thing is, is after having all these sales calls with these different options or whatever, I'm starting to see some things that I could probably do myself to get yeah. me, you know, uh, yep. get me a little bit closer without making the investment. So anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. This book is kind of. It's sparking things in you. I can yeah, see that. Absolutely. That's good. <laughs> so, um, so another quote, as long as you're alive, you will either live to accomplish your own goals and dreams or be used as a resource to accomplish someone else's. Oh, I like that. I know. My, my version of that is what side of the, what side of the paycheck do you want to sign? The front or the back? Right. Nice. I can tell Jody wants to say something. <laughs> you know, when I read that. I'm sitting here talking with my son too. I'm like, oh shit. That's all I do is I'm a resource for everybody else. I'm not, I'm not a resource for myself. So that quote, I wrote it down and I copied it. Yeah. Well, yeah. What, one thing that Jody is, you, I know maybe you are talking about this, is she is a mentor and has a large group of mentees and does spend a lot of time on it. Mm-hmm. And it's not necessary. Well, I also come from a teaching background. So I think, I, I think I've just always learned to give, 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 give. And I've never taken it the other way to yeah. make sure that I'm achieving my goals. I just give. I'm right there with you, girl. A lot of, yeah, a lot of my problem is I will have, I'll have some knowledge and I'd love to share it mm-hmm. because, and, and this is, this is kind of going back to this thing is like, well, geez, I'm like basically setting everybody else up. So one of my problems is I know what I need to do. I just don't have enough motive consistent motivation to achieve my why to do it so i'll share with others and then watch them grow so i can sit back and say yeah i helped them out when they were starting <laughs> that's basically like, literally literally like Adam, my last, that's it that's like, it my last my last business um i was in uh, i used to live in the Keweenaw, so i was up by houghton and um i had a business up there for 10 years and i helped others in my in my industry when they were first starting out i basically like prevented them from making huge mistakes because of what I learned, you know, firsthand. And now they're like doing amazing. Um, <laughs> I, I had, a, um, yeah, I had a, a friend of mine that just lost him to cancer a couple of months ago, but um, I met him out in Vegas at a trade show when he was six months in the business. I had already been in business for a couple of years. And two years later, he was a self-made millionaire. He had just all sorts of businesses all around town. And it was just like, yeah, I knew that guy from the beginning, you know, and I gave him some tips and here and there and he just took it and rang with it. So it's like, he basically did 10 X before 10 X was even a thing. Well, it was like, well, I helped that guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, part of it is mindset, Adam. And what, but what's happening to you is you are transforming, you know, you've mm-hmm. got all the skills and you've got uh, all the pieces. I have to make a comment. So I, I actually haven't spent much time in the world lately because been trying to implement all this other stuff but in the beginning because I'm just new to EXP since November 21st or something but I was like going to everything and I I I recognize Adam I recognize your name you were in in all the work chats and everything you're always like commenting on someone's <laughs> post or whatever I'm like who is this guy Adam he must be somebody in the <laughs> know because he's constantly yeah. commenting and 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 so it was kind of cute but um, he wasn't always like that my my broker my brokers were a little upset and they said that i answer i answer people's questions too quickly no i thought does this guy ever work he spends all his time like in the cloud here reading all this stuff what is what does he He, he talk what adam 
what Adam is doing, and he's a lot like me, he is soaking it in and learning the processes because he is a rule follower like me and like a police yeah. person. And so he, so it's like he feels in his bones somehow that he needs to understand and know all these processes and be the expert before he feels the confidence to, to mm -hmm. do this. So, so that's what's happening to him, though. He is be he's becoming more confident through this process. You are. I know you are. Right. All right. So chapter two, why the 10X rule is vital. Calculate the right amount of effort. If you miscalculate, you become disappointed. So not miscalculating the target, miscalculating the effort you need to put in. This, so uh, I don't even know if I miscalculate the effort. I think I calculate it and then I just don't do the effort and then that's what I'm disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't make my 20 calls, damn it. Yep. Uh, um, success is important to a person's self, uh, sense of self. Whatever your goals are, success is critical. Oops. If you quit caring, you quit winning. Okay. Um, we're just going to plow through. We don't necessarily need to finish this, finish this whole thing. because this next part is, is really, um, interesting that success is our duty. It's our mm -hmm. actual duty. So success should be approached not as a choice, but as an absolute must. Um, does that do anything for y'all? Yeah, as a as a parent, that was just like, oh, I need parent. to step up my game every like, and, and more more than just business. Like that's like, yeah, like I can't fail my kids. Right. That's the worst thing in the world, you know. So it's like, I, oh, I better <laughs> better listen yeah. to that chapter again, kind of thing, you know. I yeah. like how he refers to it as an ethical duty. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. being unethical if you don't go out there and try to be absolutely yeah. as best that you can. Right. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It's a, I've never, now it's, I kind of liken it to like the code, the code of ethics. You have an ethical responsibility to know the rules, the laws in, in the code of ethics for that matter. And what? so many people say, well, I, I didn't know that. Wait. Well, it's even, um, back on that note, so, you know, I have, I started, when I first came into EXP, I'd been a realtor for eight months and I had been doing it full time, but I had to go back and start selling cars basically this, at the same time that I joined EXP just because I had to pay the bills, you know, and so um, I was tr doing both and it was really difficult, um, but, I, you know, I did what I could. Um, but the thing, you know, I started this group in workplace called transitioning to full-time real estate with, with the goal, like, Hey, everybody in this group where we want to get into full-time real estate, that's what we want to do. Um, but a lot of people are like, Oh no, I'm kind of happy. We're, you know, just going to do both going to work this full-time job and, you know, be a real estate agent at the same time. But really is that ethical? Um, because there's so much to know and learn and you have to be a professional and to best serve your client. Is it fair to your clients? Is it ethical to your own business that it's a part-time side gig for you, real estate, you know? I had that, that struggle when I started because I had, I had lost my job two months before I got my license and my girlfriend basically helped me out with, with basic, basic stuff to keep me going. And it's, that was a struggle. Cause it's like, well, I had planned to transition at my last job, which went away. And then now it's like, well, if I go full time, I can't dedicate the it's, time I need for my business and my clients. And like, I like, it's like, I, what do I do? I don't know what to do. Yeah. So, so, so it's a struggle, but, but you got through it and we're, we're all getting through it. I got right. through it. Right. Jody, what were you going to say? I can tell you want to say something. Oh, you weren't going to say anything? Okay. I can say something. I, okay. um, I, so I originally got my license um, uh, when I got my con my general contractor's license and I was building houses back in 2005. And um, uh, so I got my real estate license to sell the homes that I built. And so, I mean, I really was doing construction and I was doing real estate at the same time. And, you know, people knew that I was my friends, my maybe knew I was doing real estate. So I would get a deal here and there. So really, I mean, I, I think the most homes I ever probably sold 
was, um, you know, like five houses in a year kind of thing because I was building them too. Um, I mean, on the outside of my own stuff. And it wasn't until just recently that I said, okay, I'm going to focus solely on real estate. And because doing it half, doing construction half, doing real estate half, um, I mean, it's not about the money. It's about um, really, you know, giving your full self to something and, and growing it and being successful at it. And since I have, I mean, so many things have, you know, come to come, you know, in my direction and it's, it's really exciting and, and fun. And I'm like, wow, why didn't I do this? I mean, I have like 14 clients I'm working with right now, all in different phases. It's like, what mm -hmm. the hell? why didn't I do this so long ago? <laughs> yep. So is success an option? So this is interesting too. Treating success as an option is one of the major reasons why more people don't create success for themselves. Most people aren't living up to their true potential. And then I like this, you know, just quit lying to yourself <laughs> yep. by minimizing how valuable success actually is to you. That, that mind later in the book, he, he kind of expands on that. And he taught when yeah. he talks about the middle-class mindset and it's just like, oh. whoa, whoa. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And then this reminds me of what, what, um, uh, uh, Julie, what you were saying when you said, talking about your former husband's um, boat business, boat dealership, and how he said it reminds, you know, the early days of him grinding, you know, success always comes as a result of earlier actions. Mm -hmm. So it kind of like, you grind, you grind, you grind, and then, and then it going, doing the activity, as you're but, doing oh. the activity, then things do start coming, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, quote, success must be approached from an ethical point of view. Success is your duty, your obligation, and your responsibility. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, does anybody want to say anything more about that? Um, about it's, a, it's, it? it's def definitely a heavy thought. Like it, it, it it's definitely stops you in your tracks and makes you think. Yeah. Um, you owe it, you know, do you, it's kind of like even the Tony Robbins idea of like the contribution, like you owe it, not just to yourself, but to everybody around you. It's like, it's almost like, um, like, you know, a bee, you know, who pollinates all our flowers and our fruits and our plants, you know, it's their obligation. They have to be successful at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Right. They have to do it because they're contributing to everybody's good you know so it's like the say you know with us we have to be we have to have success in life in order for for everything to to, to work to contribute to, to, for the good of others if we're successful we can bring more good to others that's maybe how i see it and like your kids or mm -hmm. you know i don't know anybody else have anything to say about that i think it's hard not to look at this is a is a point of accountability mm -hmm. like if you can't be yeah. accountable to i don't know uh, like a moral compass or an ethical i know ethical moral or side by side not but point being if you can't be held accountable to that then what we'll, and i know a lot of people talk about and adams mentioned it and i do as well about being accountable to my family mm -hmm. you know truth is is it's actually really easy to let your family down or be short of your family because it's there. I think it's a mistake to use that as the motivation. Now it's a why, mm -hmm. no question. Mm -hmm. It's a why. Um, but as like the point of motivation for success, I think it's a huge mistake people make because um, they're not, they're not seeing the difference. I don't think it's clear enough if that makes any sense. I mean, I, I, it's short-sighted, basically. Yeah, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So this leaves us, this is a nice segue. And this is a super interesting concept that I love. Um, that in chapter five, there's no shortage of success. So the way you view success is just as important as how you approach success. 
So success is not a zero sum game. It is not a commodity or resource that has limited reserves. So there's no shortage. There's only abundance. I, I love that. And that's what I keep having to teach myself and reteach myself and remind myself. Um, I uh, don't know where that, what now? Yeah. I, when I was writing that, I'm like, wow. And reading it, I was like, wow. I mean, because it goes back to the competition thing. People, you think you're in competition with someone because they're successful and right. Yeah. It's not, yeah. You know, I think the only person that you are in competition with is yourself, you know, yourself. like, yeah. like, um, you know, my, my friend, Rebecca, she, she is competitive and feels like, okay, if I succeed with something, you know, she, that makes her mad because she wants to succeed. She wants to be the leader. She wants to be ahead. But, but I look at it as, you know, if that person can do it, so can I. And if I can't pick up the phone and make a call, I just get mad at myself. Like, come on, you can do this. And then, and then that's how I do it. It's like, I can do this. I'm going to pick up the phone. They're going to answer it. They're going to talk to me and they're going to like it. <laughs> I totally that, picture you doing, you doing your little pep talk to yourself. Like those mannerisms and everything. Like that's literally how you do that. You just pick yeah. up the phone, you get jacked up, and then you I hit get jacked up. I'm like, I'm going to do this. You know what? I don't even care. I don't even care. Right. Calling. Watch it. <laughs> I triple dog dare you, Sylvia. <laughs> What, Jeff? I see you. Oh, you're leading forward. I do. <laughs> competition and shortage. So the notion of competition suggests, suggests, sorry, I'm going to fix this as I go, suggests that if one person wins, then someone else must lose. So that's, that's the thinking that we don't want to think anymore. So because the big players think without limits or restrictions, they're not hung up. They don't waste time on competing. They just do what they do. You know, they don't waste the time on competition. They just go for their biggest goals. Um, so um, beyond the shortage, shortage of success myth, shift your thinking to see that others' achievements actually create opportunity for you to win as well. That's interesting, too. Um, yeah. What do you guys have to say about that? So part of my disappointment in the first couple chapters of this book was that there, there didn't appear to be, and this, I, again, I'm a systems and processes guy. I was waiting for like the chart, you know, oh. this is how you, this is how you have 10 X actions or whatever. And this is how you implement this plan. And after a couple chapters in, I started realizing we're not, okay, that's, that's not what this is about. And it was this conversation that was like, okay, perhaps understanding now that this is a mindset game mm -hmm. or a mindset concept, not a, not a process or whatever. Right. Um, but the, the coming from abundance or seeing the opportunity and so other people's successes, I think triggers a, just triggers a million things again talking about comparing yourselves to others others and all that stuff i think when you close your mind or close that part of your mind off it opens up so much more right so much more is this kind of go in the same lines of um, home depot and lowe's because home depot will have a um have a location and seriously there's a location here in uh, southwest um well, Hillsborough area, which is just the suburbs of Portland. <clears throat> Lowe's is, they share a parking lot with Home Depot. <laughs> I mean, that's wow. just crazy. But to think about, if you think about it, Home Depot has, you know, is huge, right? They, they do all this marketing. They, they don't put a location anywhere that they haven't studied and figured out they're going to get, you know, the volume of people. Well, Lowe's, they're probably like, well, heck, let's, Let's shirt tail off that. They're successful. Let's put ours there too. You right. Isn't that interesting? So I, you know, we're talking about coming from abundance and prosperity. So I went to, you know, Jody and I were in San Antonio. Well, she lives there, but I was there. We were there for an EXP event so in, in our team disruptor, which is our, um, down, Jody's kind of our downline. Downline. Our downline. 
So we had an event called Maximum Experience. So I want to, David, what's his name? Darren Jacklin, who was a board member. And he was like, I don't know what he's, I don't know what he is, but he's EXP person. <laughs> what is he? What? I, don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. He, he's on the board. He's been with us from, from, he came in in like 2013. And I don't know if he came in like as an investor or what, but I want to play this video. Um, hopefully it'll, um, there you go. And we can protect the blind spots and also protect ourselves. And by doing that, we can do things right and we can make a, this company last and become a legacy company, a long standing company for, for years to come and generations to come. And so each and every one of you, over long range, as a career with the ASP Realty, you can start to create generational wealth for your families or for what I actually want is humanitarian for and stuff around the world. And that's really the long term play for this. Some of you are at age right now, in the next 10 years, you want to retire, spend time with your grandkids and do some traveling and do some volunteer work or humanitarian or church work. And so we want to make sure that we do things right foundationally, but also from an integral compliance standpoint as well, because without integrity, nothing works. Right? And so we've got to make sure that foundation. Our values, our culture is strong. We're sharing resources through combined collective intelligence. So it's very, very important. So we are growing fast as a company, but we're also watching the governance and the compliance and the ground rules. Oh, sorry, that, shoot, that was the wrong clip, but it was still really good. Um, there's another clip <laughs> where he's talking. I, I don't know where it is, I'm sorry, but it was still really good. Um, uh, where you talking about we're we're coming from we are the company's mindset the whole company like the whole premise of the company is that we are coming from a place of abundance and prosperity for everybody you know and i just love that and i wish i'm sorry i played the wrong clip, clip but I, I hope you you get the feeling of it though mm -hmm. is it talking still i hope anyway um okay we're almost done um so this competition and shortage idea, erase any concepts that you have that success is limited only to some and in certain amounts. Discipline your thinking to equate any success with the possibilities for more success. Anybody have anything to say about that? Well, and even kind of getting a little deeper into that, um, with the, like the discipline you're thinking to equate any success, the possibilities for more success, mm -hmm. even like equate any failure with the possibility for more success. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I didn't get that listing appointment. I'm going to go get four of them to make up for that one. Like right. just because I failed out, you know, I didn't do what I set out to do because everything looks good on paper in business. Um, like taking that and saying, well, good. Cause that just opened my time up that I can go work to, get four more listings or two more listings or whatever you have. So it's right. <clears throat> I like it. This is a big, uh, I don't know. It's, I think too, like, especially for, for me, like as a, when I think about recruiting to, you know, there is, it feels like there's competition for, um, and I know Jody experiences this in San Antonio because San Antonio is so saturated with EXP people. So the idea of, reaching out to other realtors who are not yet with exp and asking them to look at exp you know it's it's can be a challenge because oh i've heard of it or there's you know they're so they're so over it or whatever so so but this so this idea that there's so much competition or it's too saturated or whatever um you know it might see, seem like that but you know it's really not the truth unless you decide it's the truth right you, you know but that's absolutely right. And, and it is, it's, it's, I surround myself with strong people and that's what I have to keep on doing. Surround myself with strong running people and run and run with those leaders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I had a meeting. So I, because I'm so new to EXP and just, you know, jumping both feet in, I'm really trying to grow the real estate side, the, 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 you know, the, the buyers and the selling, selling or seller side. But of course there's that, you know, Asian attraction side. It's a whole nother piece of this big, huge puzzle. And, and, um, I mean, the gal that I'm under, Linda Quinn, 
um, she's, you know, her team, she's been doing this for years and, and she has a whole team. And so she's actually focusing on the age and attraction and, um, and because she has other people that are, you know, they do like 27 houses a month or whatever that they're doing. And, um, but for me, I'm focusing on, you know, growing and trying to put some money in my bank. Um, and yeah. I did every time I feel like I dabble a little bit in the Asian attraction arena. It's like I did, I don't know, a week ago or two, I met with a, you know, coffee for someone. And as I was talking to this gal, I thought, you're not, you're not, I mean, not to sound like, you know, better than, you know, or stuck up or anything, but she didn't have the right mindset. You know, I asked her, she, you know, read, you know, she did, she had no interest in reading or bettering herself. Um, you know, she buys leads off Zillow, you know, that's, that's, you know, but her business is sucking, you know, and, and she, she was, you know, you know, upset and frustrated, but at the same time, she had no desire to maybe implement any of these things that I have been finding success with. And, um, so for me, I, w I got frustrated. I'm like, I just wasted an hour of my time. Mm -hmm. You know, why, why am I doing this? I just need to focus on what I know I need to focus on, which is my sphere and loving on my sphere and, you know, and, and that, and not get sidetracked with this Asian attraction thing right now. Um, because talking to people that they're not in, like you said, Jody, they're not, they're not, um, running with you. They're, I deleted her name out of my phone. I'm like, <laughs> That's it was that bad. That is cold hearted. <laughs> that is like, I'm yeah. done with you. Like, well, it sounds like you didn't, you felt like there was no chance to influence this person for no. a better person. If she it. came, she was a, she was a, a, my, one of my best friends. It was a, one of her friends. And she, my best friend was telling me, you really need to talk to, you know, this, my friend Tina. She really needs, she's really struggling in real estate. I think. And I hear you and I watch you on your social media and I think you would really be able to help her. I'm like, okay, okay I want to give back. I'll help. And but then she I went not any of your damn help. No. Nope. I think I just kind of threw up all over her, all this excitement, everything I'm doing. And she was just kind of sitting back going, that looks like a lot of work. <laughs> she, anyway. might need to go, she might need to go, you know, work at the yeah. cash. Yes. That's, that's the back of the check mentality. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like for me, like I, it's agent attraction and, and downstream revenue and all that jazz. It can be very lucrative, but I know how much I love shiny objects. And like I joined EXP for real estate. I didn't join for stocks and all that other crap. Oh, and right. I'm not going to, <laughs> and I'm not going to worry about that until I like one of my, one of my goals is number one, to get out of the mentorship program. Number two is I want to grow as fast as I can and sustain that so that I can build it, get in a position where I can build the team. Then I will worry about that. Like, like that's just, that's I think, yeah, working on tracking seen... agents is taking me away from my goal and I have to not worry about that and learn, for, learn how others do it so that when I go to build my team, I can be efficient at it. I'm, I'm with you, Adam. Thanks. Because I'm a very high CI on the disk profile, and I am like systems and processes. I'm slow to think, quick to act. I got to I gotta let it marinate for a little bit, and then when I get ready to go, you better look out. <laughs> See, I think that's interesting with uh, the 10X idea that just just do it, you know, just mm -hmm. take some action, and it'll all work out. Um, a friend of mine, I don't know if you guys know Amy B., Amy Brohammer out of Cincinnati, um, she does some courses, uh, buyer loyalty courses and some uh, listing courses. She's my sponsor in the EXP. Mm -hmm. She, uh, she, she kind of paraphrases Grant. She says her um, quote is implement now, perfect later. Just start something. Don't worry about the perfection. And in the same way, I, I, I have to think things out. You know, I, yeah. I remember a handful of years ago, I remodeled a deck on the back of our house. I literally thought about it and planned it out for a year, at least. Mm -hmm. and, and very diligently. It's not like it was just my procrastination. I, I was. You were like serious. working on that. Yeah. And I bet it's a beautiful deck. 
Well, and like sitting then, yeah. And then when it, once it was time to actually start working on it, it happened. It happened quickly, and it was executed the way I wanted. So I always felt good about that. But I think in business, yeah. I, I think that opportunities are, all, especially in this business. And, I'm, and for the record, I'm not a, an agent attraction guy. I'm, I'm the same way. I'm in the middle, of, or I'm at some point along the way of getting things straight here in my real estate business so that I can, uh, yeah, at some point in time, go do the agent attraction. However, my point is, is that some opportunities in business are very, very, very time-based. Um, yep. Opportunity in general is time-based. Uh, and when you talk about agent attraction in particular, you know, I've been on for a year. I think we were at 6,000 agents a year ago. Um, wow. You know, so all of those opportunities have slipped so that's what I'm talking about too with, this, with, with that, you know, because it's my, you know, when I, I mean, I got into ESP because, you know, because I knew I would, I'd make more money just with selling real estate. So that was number one, obviously. Number two, though, was, um, you know, having the synergy and collaboration. So I, I've got that. That's good. But the, the, the revenue share part, it was so mind blowing to me and exciting to me and I do get revenue share and I do have you know six people and I think Jody you have people um and I'm building this wealth chart and uh and I've got huge goals for, for revenue share because I want my fair share I want my I want my unfair share <laughs> um, right. well we're still at the very beginning of building exp you know I, I start getting down I go down the rabbit hole going San Antonio has 500 agents in exp already you know, but there's 11,000 agents in, in San Antonio. So I don't need to go down that rabbit hole. We are at the very beginning of mm -hmm. growing EXP. What are they, what are they, what are they anticipating this year? 45,000 agents? Yeah. A when lot. I started, when I started, there was just 4,000 agents uh, the month I started in 2017 in August. And now, and now we're at 18,000. Yeah. But you know what, you know. Yes, there is plenty and we do have the whole world and we're going to be going into all the English speaking countries and maybe we have opportunities there too. And we have still the whole North America and um, that's exciting, but it's like, there's other people and this is where my competition thing or my little shortage thinking comes in. It's like, there's other people like already on it, doing it and, um, and bringing in people and, and it's like a sprint. It's a sprint, you know, it is a sprint. It's and time so, for us to sprint. It's yeah. yeah. So I guess I I'm just saying if, if it is an area you're you're curious about or interested, yeah. in, I I wouldn't I wouldn't not do it. Maybe you don't have to like focus on it, but I I wouldn't like wait. That's all I'm saying. I'm totally gonna. I'm not gonna listen to you. I'm totally gonna wait until I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. Well, you do. <laughs> you have to wait till you're ready. Yeah. Wait till you're ready. <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's an agent in Green Bay here that for 2018 did not do a single transaction. He focused on recruiting as many agents as possible. All that was it. Yeah, I know. But he was, and he was, uh, he used to own a Kelly Williams Market Center in Green Bay before mm -hmm. he got out of it and came to EXP and sold that to another guy. And so he, like, he's used to doing that kind of stuff. So it was pretty natural for him. But yeah, we, we had just broke, yesterday the brokers announced we had just broke 301 agents in Wisconsin. And um, it was it was it was kind of a struggle, but there's yeah, it's it's gonna be interesting when they said like they wanted to do like forty five thousand agents this year. It's like numbers are cool, but like I hope they're quality because we have quite a few going out, you know, outboarding as much as inboarding kind of thing. Like like I hope the net is is quality because there's a lot of, there's a lot of mix, you know. I, and I have I have concerns about that growth too from a like the marketplace i'm in i don't and i suppose it has the same impact on a bigger market like one bad exp agent in mm -hmm. this marketplace and it does spoil a lot of opportunities for for me and any other exp agent mm -hmm. in the future um I, i'm being faced with a position a situation right now uh there's a brand new agent he has one transaction under his belt and he thinks he's fully trained and wants to come on board and work out of my branch office and i don't i no, i'm not interested in i i'm a certified mentor but i'm i'm not in a position to be mentoring somebody right now 
And so he, I think he's going to just go rogue and just try to be an independent, you know, not work out of my branch office or my team. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe somebody else, another agent that is experienced, I'm not so concerned about, but this kid coming to me and saying, I got one transaction under my belt. I'm fully trained. Let's go. I, that, that's a recipe for disaster. And, yeah, that's cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and unfortunately it's, it's a recipe for disaster with an EXP sign attached to it. Yeah, I, I just Googled in Oregon. It looks like 16,000 agents are roughly in Oregon, 10,000 in Portland, roughly. I, I, and I am also licensed in the state of Washington. And um, so I went to the broker meeting this week and the brokers there are saying, guys, we need more men. We need more mentors because yep. there are too many newbies. You guys are bringing on people that, need to be in the, in the mentor program and we don't have enough people mentoring. There's, so, there's a lot of frustration in Wisconsin too, because you got people coming in either brand new to real estate or coming from other firms. And the, there's a lack of mentors. There's not clear direction about mentorship pro, uh, program. And I think, or maybe not, uh, maybe a misunderstanding as to their exact role would probably be a better way to say it. <laughs> and I'm sitting down well, and, and I'm sitting down no, because true. Sure, EXP right. is very clear about what you're supposed to do. And that's it. Okay. And I think people are, especially new to real estate. It's like a mentor is generally like, like you're supposed to show me how to do this and take me on show and, and show me how to do this because yeah, I passed the state exam. So I answered questions they wanted. They thought I should know, but <laughs> that's like a police officer. You know, you go to the police Academy. Okay. For get all that crap. This is how you be a cop. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they think that that mentor is basically like their field training officer. And, and like, I know EXP leadership is talking about that, but like, that's part of the attraction thing is like, when you're attracting agents, you gotta, you know, you gotta pick the good ones that are going to assimilate well into the, um, right. into the world. Cause yeah, I'm, I'm meeting with uh, a new agent, new, new to real estate on Monday afternoon and her mentor is like kind of absent it just doesn't really have a clue what's going on it's like man like how is it like you know and i'm happy to help but it's like you know i just joined and started in the, the real estate program too <laughs> august, yeah like you august of la doing. august of last year i've got one transaction under my belt from october and like i'm reaching out to new agents because their mentor isn't there for them just to, just to deal with that frustration you know Successful agents, experienced agents are calling Adam to ask him what the state rules are because he's now so knowledgeable about stuff because he's taken so much time to learn stuff and he yeah, knows they won't, stuff. They won't, they won't call either of the two state brokers for like backup stuff. They'll, they'll like, they're like, hey, what's going on? They will call. And one, one, yeah, yeah one, one was, a, um, she was a paralegal for like 11 years. And the other one has been an associate broker for nine years. Adam, we have we have one minute, so you get. Oh, okay. You, yeah. So we don't care. We don't care about that. But right. good job. Um. Okay. So it's ten oh five, you guys. It's ten oh five, and uh, we're gonna end. But this was great. Um, I loved talking to each one of good you. Good notes. Good notes. Thank you. Yeah. Weren't they good notes? Oh. Yes. Good job, okay. Julie. And Jeff, it was great seeing you, and I hope you're doing well, and you're the family that you uh, have had to attend to a little bit is doing better. Yeah, um, I can. <laughs> we could probably have a talk just about that. Um, thank you. <laughs> so by next week, I'm going to dive into the book now instead of just doing my cliff notes. Where are okay. we going to be next week? By chapter ten, Julie. Well, okay. So chapter five, we uh, I. I have the Kindle version of the book, so I was I had got to chapter 17, and it looked like I was halfway through the book, so I'm like, oh, there must be 34 chapters until I figured out how to use my Kindle, because I just mm -hmm. got it, and now I realize there's only 24 chapters, so that's why I told you, Sylvia, we, we didn't necessarily have to go through all five, but it worked, so out. It worked out. I don't know how many, I was trying to divide it by six weeks, because that's how long this session right. is, but so we don't have, we can maybe do three chapters next week. Yeah. So, okay. So up to chapter um, eight. eight. Okay. Or nine. Yeah. And I want to share with you this, see this graph? Yes. 
It's, it's a, I found it on YouTube. It's called Between the Lines. This is one of my little um, clip notes that I found. Okay. And it's, on, it's only about five minutes long, but it okay. takes the whole book and it, and it goes through each little section. And it was really, really good. Can so you share it in your group? What's that? Can you share it in the Go-Getter Book Club group? Yes, I can. Oh, great. Between the lines. All right. Thanks, guys. Gotta Thank go. Thank you. All right. Okay, see bye, guys. Bye, guys.